In this exercise, 4.0mm self-drilling, self-tapping cannulated screws will be used to demonstrate the technique for the fixation of a triplane fracture of the distal tibia. The fracture lines occur in three planes, sagittal, axial and coronal. In the sagittal plane, the fracture line occurs within the epiphysis and extends into the joint, for example, Salter Harris type 3 fracture. In the transverse plane, it passes through the growth plate, and in the coronal plane, it passes through the posterior metaphysis, for example, Salter Harris type 2 fracture. Taken together, the fractures are, in principle, a Salter Harris type 4 fracture. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to identify and classify triplane fractures, describe the relevant anatomy, and describe the technique for fracture reduction and fixation using cannulated, self-drilling, self-tapping screws. The clinical indications for operative treatment include intraarticular fracture displacement over 2 to 3 millimeters in any direction, gap or step. Fractures which cannot be reduced and fixed in a conservative way. In these x-rays of a 14-year-old boy, the AP view shows a Salter Harris type 3 fracture. The lateral view shows a Salter Harris type 2 fracture. The fracture pattern is highly suggestive of a triplane fracture. In this X-ray, the displacement of the fragment more than 2 mm is apparent. A CT scan was used for a more precise diagnosis. The fracture lines are very clearly displayed in the 2D reconstruction. The 3D reconstruction does not show the fracture lines clearly enough. In this case, a transcutaneous cannulated screw fixation was performed under general anesthesia. The patient is positioned supine on a radiolucent table. Alternatively, the sterile foot can be positioned directly on the camera of the image intensifier. This positioning allows for better imaging of the fracture and visualization of the fracture planes. In the majority of cases, a closed reduction and percutaneous screw fixation can be performed. Under image intensifier control, the direction of the guide wire for the cannulated screw is marked on the skin. Note that the guide wire for the cannulated screw crosses the physis in an oblique way, which allows for indirect reduction and compression of the fragment in the horizontal as well as the vertical direction. The instruments required for reduction and fixation are the cannulated hexagonal screwdriver, for the 4.0mm cannulated screws, the guide wire, diameter 1.25mm with threaded tip, the K-wire, diameter 1.6mm, and the depth gauge. A blue marker is used to mark the full circumference of the physis on the tibia and on the fibula. For the dorsolateral part, the fibula is flipped anterior. At this point, we stop the video and you are requested to draw the fracture line with a red marker based on the X-ray and 2D CT scan on the screen. Before you cut the fracture, your table instructor should check your drawing first. Using a red marker, the epiphyseal Salter Harris type 4 fracture line is marked on the anterior part of the epiphysis and on the growth plate from the center of the anterior part up to the posterolateral side. The model is rotated 180 degrees and the line is extended on the posterior aspect of the epiphysis. In order to manipulate the talus, a K wire is inserted and used as a joystick. 
the talus is pivoted out of the way and the fracture line is completed. On the posterior side of the tibia, the 3 to 4 cm long triangular metaphyseal fragment, which represents the Salter Harris type 2 fracture, is marked. A cutting mat has been introduced in order to protect the table surface and preserve the sharpness of the scalpel. With oscillating movements, a sagittal cut is created through the red line, starting at the level of the physis and then down along the level of the joint surface. The talus is pivoted out of the way and the joint cut is completed. An epiphyseal cut is created from the medial to the lateral side. During this procedure, care must be taken to protect the bone model from destruction. On the posterolateral aspect, starting at the level of the physis, a metaphyseal fragment is produced in a cranial direction and completed with the cut through the red line on the medial side of the metaphysis. The scalpel is held slightly oblique so that the cuts will converge. The bone must be cut deep enough on the level of the physis to achieve the correct fracture pattern and avoid breakage of the metaphyseal wedge. The triplane fracture is a typical external rotation injury. Once the cutting procedure has been completed, the fragment is rotated externally and with an audible click it will displace, producing the triplane fracture. In theory, the fragment displacement can be resolved using a perpendicular screw technique in relation to the Salter-Harris type 3 fracture line. This provides good compression of the fragment medially. However, if the fragment still has a step in the joint surface, this step will have been fixed and is a pre-arthrotic condition. An oblique screw technique will stabilize, reduce, compress and fix the fracture. The biomechanical principle of this technique is the vector geometry. The forces should be resolved correctly to avoid a step in the joint. The articular surface of the joint and the physis is reduced without displacement. Starting at the anterior lateral edge, directly above the insertion of the syndesmosis, a 1.6 mm non-threaded K-wire is inserted. The K-wire can be used as a joystick to manipulate the fragment for reduction. After anatomically correct reduction has been achieved, the 1.25 mm guide wire with threaded tip is advanced to the contralateral cortex. Note the oblique direction of the wire passing the medial side of the almost closed growth plate. The K-wire is removed. The screw length is measured with the depth gauge. A 4.0 mm self-drilling, self-tapping cannulated screw is slid over the guide wire. In a clinical situation, an incision for the screw would be necessary. The screw is inserted using the cannulated hexagonal screwdriver. The joint surface is reduced and compressed. The guide wire is removed. Depending on the size of the laterodorsal Volkmann wedge, a second screw from anteromedial may be recommended. Normally, if the wedge is smaller than 2 cm, the distal screw is sufficient for joint fixation. Here, a second cannulated screw will be inserted from anteromedial to posterolateral. The screw length is measured using the depth gauge.
the cannulated screw is slid over the guide wire and inserted using the screwdriver. In the axial view, the nearly perpendicular position of the two screws is visible. The posterior metaphysial fracture is reduced and fixed. You should now be able to identify and classify triplane fractures, describe the relevant anatomy, and describe the technique for fracture reduction and fixation using cannulated, self-drilling, self-tapping screws.